my mom was taught to do beadwork and stuff by her grandmas and in Indian way you have a lot of grandmas. They may not even be related to you. A lot of grandmas show her how to bead when she was little. I've been doing quill work and bead work since I was a teenager and I'm still at it. She was raised by her um, grandma Josephine Greyhawk and she raised 20 something kids. She was the rock in our family. She was glad to know that I was doing all this work. She used to tell me, I know you get help from the other side. That wasn't my t intentions, being a working artist. I just was doing it for my kids, you know, because they dance and stuff. I went to Santa Fe one day. I went to visit my friend. And she said, how come you don't do Indian market? How come you're not in there? What? I never heard of it. <laughs> so they uh, made sure I got applications and everything, and they just put some stuff in there. First time, one now. That's the show. <laughs> I didn't even know what I was getting into. If anything, I get inspiration from looking at what she does, and you know, she creates masterpieces every day. I really believe she does have help from the spirit world. Well, it's part of our culture that before beads, they were doing quill work. The beads, bead trades came in with the traders and started to get more colors. It was kind of a big honor that if you had somebody that had the skill to do that in your family and like the Plains warriors all decked out in their outfits and everything is their wives, mothers, sisters had the skills to be able to do that for them and provide that for them. It's just something that you do for the love of your family, I guess. You can make something and not, not really know what it means until after it comes to you. I always feel like um, we're more of vessels and because um, I work a lot from like things that come to me and I have dreams about things and so I feel like it has to be made, it has a calling to be made. We feel it's important to hold on to the past a little bit, you know, and keep that culture strain alive so that maybe it will pass on to other people. And so we're trying to pass that along to the next generation and, you know, the youth and grandkids. Yeah, I've taught a few people how to bead and stuff and they became pretty good beaters. You have to really have the one to and, and the and patience. Patience. In today's age, modern times and stuff, it's really hard for people to understand that you you have to sit here for days, <laughs> you know, to make something. We look at it as a blessing to be able to do this every day. So we encourage it. That's that's how our culture is gonna survive. My name is Joyce Growing Thunder Fogarty. I'm listening to Boyne Sue from Fort Peck Indian Reservation, northeastern Montana. And I'm Juanita Growing Thunder Fogarty, and I'm a Cinnaboyne Sioux from Fort Peck Reservation, Montana. And um, I do beadwork and quill work, just like my mom.